So if I'm doing my math right, today is day 4,283 of our 90-day mission to Mars. Um, I'll be talking to you today about the Mars Exploration Rover Project, the mission of the rover's spirit and opportunity. What I'm going to try to do today is three things. First of all, describe to you some of the innovations that were necessary to do the job that we were asked to do. Second, try to tell you how we brought about those innovations. What was the, the, the way in which we as a team of literally thousands of scientists and engineers came up with the innovations that would be necessary to actually make our vehicles work on Mars? And then finally, at the end, I'm going to just try to share with you some of the adventure story of what we've experienced on Mars uh, in the 12 years that we've been there. So this is Mars, the object of our affections. It's a terrible place. If you went there, you would absolutely hate it. Um, the average temperature is 60 degrees below zero Celsius. It goes down to 100 below Celsius at night. If you took all the water vapor in the Martian atmosphere and you condensed it out on the planet's surface, you would make a layer of frost barely a hundredth of a millimeter thick. So it is a cold and dry and desolate world today. But in the past, it was different. This is a picture that was taken from orbit, and it shows a valley. The valley is only a few hundred meters wide, snaking across the Martian surface. And if you look carefully in the upper right, you can even see the tiny little channel through which the water that carved that valley flowed. Now, you can't do this on Mars today. On Mars today, it's 60 degrees below zero. It's too cold to allow this to happen. And so this is telling us that in the past, the planet was different. It was warmer, it was wetter, and it was more like Earth. Now, any geologist will tell you if you got erosion somewhere, then someplace else you have to have deposition. And there are places that you can go on Mars where you can find these wonderful sequences, these wonderful stacks of layered sedimentary rocks. And the great thing about sedimentary rocks is that they preserve in their details, in their chemistry, in their mineralogy, in their texture, information about what the conditions were like billions of years ago when those rocks were laid down. So if you can go to Mars with the right tools and you can read the story in the rocks, you can learn about whether or not Mars was once a world that might have been capable of supporting life. That was our goal. So to do this, we built two robot geologists. This picture was taken at Cape Canaveral in Florida whew, almost 13 years ago. Uh, you can see the rover Spirit in the foreground, all tricked out and ready to go to Mars. Uh, opportunity is against the back wall without the wheels on yet. I'm the good-looking guy in the white suit. The, uh, the rovers are our surrogates. They go in our place. We experience Mars through their sensors. Now, our mission arose from catastrophe. In 1998, NASA sent two spacecraft to Mars. Mars lander silent after a descent. There was a Mars lander that crashed on the surface because of an error in a single line of software on board. And there was an orbiter that burned up in the Martian atmosphere because of a mix-up over English and metric units. It's a very embarrassing way to lose a spacecraft. Don't let it happen to you. <laughs> so with those two failures um, having just happened, there was a great deal of attention, you might say, focused on whether our mission was going to succeed. <clears throat> we also had a brutally tight schedule. This is a complicated plot, but what it shows is the trajectory that our spacecraft had to follow on its way from Earth to Mars. You can't launch to Mars just any time you want. The planets have to be properly positioned so that your trajectory will take you precisely from one planet to the other. So our launch date and therefore, our schedule was literally driven by the alignment of the planets. You cannot argue with Sir Isaac Newton. And what that mean, what meant was we had a three-week-long launch window in the summer of 2003, and if we didn't hit that launch window, we weren't going to Mars. Okay, we were spending a million dollars a day, 
Nobody was going to keep us going for the time that it took, which is 26 months for the planets to line up properly again. If we didn't make that launch window in the summer of 2003, our rovers were not going to Mars at all. They were going to the Air and Space Museum.